Hey guys, so this is going to be the first in a series of videos really focusing around the user access management solution, which is um, .1x MAC authentication, BYOD, all that stuff. Um, the HP IMC modules for authentication. So in this particular one, we're going to get started on the Active Directory integration. So we're going to uh, run you through configuring domain controller assisted PEEP authentication. We're going to configure the LDAP server connection, and then we're going to do LDAP sync policy. So uh, let's get started. So really quickly here, we've got an Active Directory users computers, and you can see here that we've got a domain controller for the domain ha. Int. So this is just a, an internal domain that we're going to use here. So it's important is the ha.int. So that's going to be dc equals ha, dc equals int in the LDAP um, connection later. Uh, as well, we're going to have the administrator account, which we're going to use to set up the LDAP sync policy, which is in the users. So cn equals administrator, cn equals users, common name. And then we've actually created a new OU, so a folder here in Active Directory, specifically to be able to sync just these users and not all the users, right? You may not want all of your AD users really synced over to IMC, and you might want to apply different policies to different groups of users based on the OU. So we're going to get started by configuring the domain assisted PEEP authentication. So um, LDAP, the Active Directory implementation of LDAP doesn't allow the export of passwords. So we're going to have to create this domain assisted PEEP authentication so that IMC can um, authenticate users later on. So we're going to go into service, UAM, service parameters, system settings, and click on the domain controller assisted PEEP authentication and click on the little screwdriver here to get into the options. So I've already got this set up. So the first thing, have the um, FQD DN, the fully qualified domain controller name. So that was the name of the domain controller we're going to use. We're going to have a virtual computer name, which you're going to create. And then, of course, the password. We need the DNS server, so this will allow it to find the domain controller. And the domain controller IP, um, which controller version. So when we go back over here onto our AD users and computers here, we have created a computer in the computer OU, a computer account called VCOMP, so just virtual computer. You can call it really whatever you want. It does have to match what's right here though, okay, so that's important. And then we're going to download the script, um, so just click on that, download it, and put it somewhere that you can find it. So I've got it here in the temp directory. So you're going to do notepad, open it up, and we're going to edit this. And then we're just going to have to change the LDAP settings in here to make sure that they match with what you've got set, right? So what we're doing really is we're setting the password for this new virtual computer. And again, the LDAP needs to match, right? Once we've done that, C script, modify computer account pass.vbs, this runs. And now what we've done is we've just put that IMC123 password and assign it to the VCOMP. We click OK. And then that's all we have to worry about for our domain-assisted PEEP authentication. This will now allow .1x users to authenticate properly against the uh, AD server. So now we're going to look at the LDAP server synchronization. So the first thing we're going to have to do is actually set up that LDAP connection. So we're going to go service, UAM, and LDAP service. And you're going to have three options here. The first thing we're going to worry about is just the LDAP server. So we're going to click on LDAP server, of course. And now we're going to have to add the LDAP server. And this is really where that all those those things we talked about earlier from the um, from the AD standpoint that we have to make sure that uh, your settings match. So you put in your server name, the version of LDAP you want, the IP address. And of course, the server type, because we're going to be dealing with a Microsoft Active Directory environment, which is just a little bit different than um, standard LDAP. Not too much different, but there are little small changes that, that do require us to change the server type here. Go Microsoft AD. And we can leave pretty much everything else at, uh, at base here. So for the base DN, um, I'm going to actually just put this as the DC equals HA comma DC equals int. So this really gives us maximum flexibility that the sub DN, which we're going to look at later, has to be in the hierarchy underneath the base DN. Of course, the admin DN, this is going to be the CN equals administrators, common name equals users, directory container equals HA, um, all that's good here. And then the username attribute must be the SAM account name. Okay, so we're going to click on test. If you have a standby server, of course, you could put that in here as well. We're going to click on test, connecting 
to LDAP server AD sync succeeded, we're good to go. Again, the admin name and admin password, um, those must be uh, valid on your Active Directory controller. Okay? So the next thing we're going to look at is actually creating the LDAP sync policy. So we're going to go over to the sync policy here and we're going to click on add. And then we're going to put in the policy name. So you can have multiple policies dealing with multiple different um, OUs within an, an AD structure. So if you want to deal with different users in different ways, your engineering users in one way, you can drop those all into a OU, an organizational unit, a folder in Active Directory and deal with them as you want. So then the sub base DN is going to be really this is going to list off the, the, the specific OU that we want. So in our case, we're going to get all those users that we had earlier in the OU lab, DC equals HA, DC equals int. And so you can see this is OU lab is underneath the DC HA, DC int. Right? So that's the sub base DN, and that's going to be the users that we want to grab is just from this, this organizational unit or this folder structure. And then do we want to have the sync object of access users or device management users? So of course we want access users here. And you have some other options, but we'll just we'll go through those now. If you're really interested, there's always the admin guide. So now as part of the sync policy, we've got a whole bunch of other um, information here that we're going to be allowed to sync over into the IMC database. So you, for instance, could use the telephone number, right? Um, email address, perhaps, right? You've got a whole bunch of options here. So what's important to notice and, and important to be aware of is that if you choose to actually uh, to choose to to sync one of these over, those must be valid fields and they must be filled out in the Active Directory. So if we choose, for instance, here on email, and I choose to make this the mail sync policy, my AD users must 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 have that field valid, or the sync will fail. Right? Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to bind this to an access service. So an access service, which is, um, you can check this out in some of the other videos, is really how are we going to treat these types of users when they log in? Are we going to have a BYOD a policy? Are we going to put them in a specific VLAN? Do we apply ACLs? All those kind of things, right? We click on the finish button. Oh, and we have an error message here. So the, uh, the password field um, must have something in it. So we're just going to put in the word test. And now we're going to click finish. Again, the password field doesn't mean anything in, in LDAP synchronization for Active Directory specifically. We're still going to be able to go against the LDAP server. So last step here, we're going to click on the synchronize button. And assuming that we've filled out that email properly in all of our user accounts, magically what's going to happen is this is going to go over to the Microsoft Active Directory server. It's going to synchronize and pull over those five user accounts, which we can then verify by going into user access users there we go all access users and now you can see there's a little icon beside those accounts and that means that these are LDAP synchronized accounts so there we have it we have set up domain assisted peep authentication your LDAP server as well as your LDAP sync policies See you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.